Giulio Burattini, a young but seasoned Italian hunter, was tracking a wild boar with his father in the Pigoletto Reserve. Seizing the right moment, Giulio aimed and fired at the animal, causing it to fall, and the hunt seemed to be over. However, as Giulio approached to inspect his prey, the boar suddenly sprang up and attacked the hunter, delivering a powerful bite to his thigh. The bite severed a femoral artery, and all Giulio could do was shout to his friends on the radio, Help! Help! I'm dying! When the rescue teams and emergency services arrived, they rushed to revive the man, but he'd lost too much blood and passed away in his father's arms. Julio's story is both sad and shocking because he loved hunting and had the skills for it, however it seemed he underestimated the wild boar, a creature that can be more dangerous than a bear. According to HunterCourse.com, wild boars are considered some of the most hazardous animals to hunt. They're resilient, fast, and incredibly clever. In fact, studies suggest they're among the smartest animals on Earth. Combine these qualities with sharp tusks and the unpredictable nature of the boar, you have a deadly combination. Yes, wild boars do attack hunters. These animals don't back down easily, so it's important to take a good shot. Nowadays, people follow the concept of ethical hunting. This includes not just knowing and respecting the animals they hunt, understanding wildlife, laws, and proper behavior, but also being skilled enough to make a clean kill with one shot, minimizing any suffering. That's why hunters usually aim for vital areas of their prey, typically the heart and lungs. If someone has honed their accuracy, they might go for the neck, but only if they're sure the shot will hit the spinal cord. But it's never a good idea to aim for the head. Sure, shooting any animal in the head will kill it. However, despite wild pigs being smart, they don't have big brains. Yeah, it's a bit of a paradox. There are stories of hunters thinking they hit a wild pig in the head, approaching their catch only for the animal to jump up and charge at them. Maybe poor Julio was aiming for a boar's head, too. Additionally, aiming for the head is just more challenging. A wild boar's small brain is well protected by a thick, sturdy skull and tough hide, plus it's a moving target, quite fast at that. Taking down a boar with a single headshot requires not only well-chosen bullets or arrows, but also an incredible skill level. Even the most experienced hunters can't always pull it off, so they tend to play it safe. Shooting an animal in the head multiple times just to ensure a fatal outcome seems, well, unethical. It causes unnecessary pain to the animal and increases the danger for the person as the already aggressive boar becomes even more hostile. Because of the pig's skull having a shallow angle, a bullet may deflect rather than pierce through. Moreover, when boars are munching away, they're pretty much always on the move, especially their heads. This only increases the odds of a hunter making an incorrect shot, given that every miss can come with a hefty price. Even if the boar doesn't charge at you after a failed shot but runs away instead, it's still better than facing a deadly bite. However, tracking a wounded boar, much like a wounded deer, is nearly impossible. Don't expect to see a bloody trail. The blood needs to pass through fat and fur, so it might only be visible 100 to 150 feet away from where the boar was injured. In short, you won't find it. Just to add, we're discussing hunters with licenses, hunting still a thing in many countries, and in some places the government actually encourages the shooting of wild boars. Now back to headshots. Apart from dealing with a moving target, there's another challenge. Gravity. It'd be strange if gravity didn't affect the trajectory of the bullet. Bullets don't fly straight to their target. Gravity affects their trajectory. As soon as a bullet leaves the barrel, gravity pulls it downward, causing it to deviate from its initial path. Yes, you got it right. Bullets start to fall the moment they exit the barrel. And the farther the target, the faster it falls. And if the target's a moving boar, trying to hit its tiny brain becomes nearly impossible. It's not just gravity causing issues, there's also the wind factor. Regardless of its direction, it always affects your shooting precision. There are actual formulas to calculate the best way to shoot, taking into account the wind's speed and direction. Speaking of which, when it comes to wild boar hunting, where's the right spot to aim for to stay ethical and safe at the same time? Make sure to hit the crucial organs, but avoid the brain. Your options are the heart and lungs located right here. Remember, a boar isn't the same as a deer, so it's important to understand its anatomy. Hunting a wild boar the same way you'd hunt a deer could mean hitting the intestines and getting nowhere. Meanwhile, if you manage to hit crucial organs, the boar will drop right there. This means you can swiftly resume hunting if necessary without the trouble of trailing a wounded animal. Also, no one wants a large boar with enormous tusks chasing them, right? Aiming for the neck is another solid strategy as it efficiently brings down the animal by breaking the spine. But of course you have to actually hit the neck. 
To figure out where to aim, imagine a line running from the front legs of the pig to the top of its back. Center your shot about one third up from the pig's belly along this line. Taking aim at this spot can help you avoid mistakes when shooting. It's important to think about the specific wild pig you're targeting. If the sow or boar weighs under 123 pounds, a side shot will do the job. Just aim from the front leg to the middle of the chest and you're done. Although hitting the heart might be a challenge due to its lower position, damaging both lungs ensures a swift and humane kill. When it comes to bigger boars, you have to deal with their tough armor that safeguards crucial organs. Male boars grow a special kind of cartilage around their shoulders to defend themselves in confrontations with other boars. The shield begins around the shoulder area and covers the region from the base of the neck to the front part of the hips. In older boars, the shield can be as thick as two inches. While the shield of an adult boar may be tough and thick, it doesn't mean it's bulletproof. However, hunters often share stories of boars supposedly deflecting bullets. Well, what do you expect from hunters? And finally, here's a final argument. If you aim at the spot we discussed, you could even afford to miss slightly. Avoid hitting the heart and lungs. Sure, there might be ethical concerns, but after such a shot, the boar won't run far. Being wounded will slow it down, prevent attacks, and give the hunter a chance for another finishing shot. All right, all is clear with wild boars. Now what about simpler animals for hunting, like deer? Would a headshot be the best choice here? In the National Association of Deer's collection of odd artifacts, there's a deer jawbone that's bent, deformed, and missing a couple of teeth on the left side. On the right side, there's a gray object buried in a strange bulge of the bone. Turns out it's a bullet that shattered the deer's jaw, but surprisingly, the deer didn't die. The deer lived long enough for the bone to heal around the lodged bullet and the craters left by the shot away teeth. It even lived long enough to develop an odd slant in its remaining molars due to the altered chewing movements. Eventually, the deer was ethically killed. Yes, the deer survived a gunshot to the head, but what are the chances of hitting the jaw in the first place? Surprisingly, it's higher than hitting a deer in the brain. Seasoned hunters recommend never aiming for a deer's head, whether using a rifle or a bow. Even if someone boasts about taking down an animal with a single headshot, remember that hitting the brain requires aiming at a target the size of a baseball with no room for error. A wounded deer will experience unnecessary suffering going against ethical guidelines. The baseball size isn't a joke. That's the size of an adult deer's brain cavity, about 2.7 inches, maybe four for a really big buck. Don't be misled by the overall size of the animal in its head. The space for the brain inside the skull is tiny. Also, deer don't stay still, and it's mostly their heads that are moving. The animal might pause and then keep moving once you pull the trigger. Even the best shooter needs a margin for error to ensure a quick, humane death for the animal, or at least a chance for recovery. Trying to aim for the brain doesn't give you room for mistake. Instead of shooting a deer in the head, another option is to aim for vital organs in the chest area. This is a more reliable and ethical shot, increasing the chances of a quick and humane kill. It minimizes suffering and reduces the risk of damaging the meat, as shooting in the head can cause bone fragments to scatter. When hunting, targeting the heart and lungs is the best choice. The heart's just a bit larger than the brain, but it's closely connected to and largely surrounded by an even bigger target, the lungs. Hitting both lungs still means killing a deer even if you miss the heart. Moreover, major arteries run through the entire chest cavity, and hitting them can cause a sudden drop in blood pressure and blood volume, leading to a quick death. Beyond that, there are other potential targets, not the best options, but still fatal. This includes the shoulder bone and shoulder blade. If you err far forward, might break them on one or both sides. Aim too high and you risk hitting the spine. If you miss the lungs, there's the chance of hitting the liver, resulting in a slower death. We could make a separate video about hunting deer with bows and crossbows. There are plenty of examples where things don't go as planned. Too many to count. In Nashville, Tennessee, a deer was found with a crossbow bolt shot vertically into its head. It's quite puzzling how someone managed to pull off such a shot, but thankfully the bolt didn't hit the deer's brain. The poor animal roamed around with the bolt in its head until it was captured. Once caught, the bolt was removed and the wound was treated with medicine. Let's hope the deer made it through this strange incident. In another interesting tale from Canada, specifically Ontario, a deer named Carrot was discovered with an arrow sticking out of its head. Despite the seemingly dreadful injury, Carrot didn't seem bothered at all. He was acting as friendly as ever towards humans. There was no blood or infection in the wound. Vets concluded that the arrow actually stopped bleeding, so they decided not to remove it. Instead, they sawed off the protruding part. 
People thought that if the healing went as planned, the remaining part of the arrow would naturally slip out of the skull when the time was right. However, experts later changed their minds and decided to remove the arrow after all. There was no bleeding, but pus started oozing from the wound. Carrot looked really bad, and his chances of survival were much lower than the chances of dying. But the deer survived and fully recovered. You could even consider it a Christmas miracle since it happened in winter. Here's another deer with an arrow in its head, this time in New Jersey. Actually, as long as the arrow or similar object doesn't hit major arteries or organs causing a deadly infection, many such wounds can be endured. However, it's definitely not a reason to try your luck. Deer don't have magical healing powers, even if they can go on living their deer lives with an arrow in their head or chest. In North Carolina, a deer had a close encounter with a hunter, resulting in a few broken ribs and a part of the arrow getting stuck in its body. The deer survived, and around the arrow shaft and tip, a bone grew. The peculiar discovery was made by another hunter who shot the deer and found a skeleton with an unexpected twist. When the deer got injured, the broken ribs caused heavy bleeding, forming a large blood clot not only above the fractured bones, but also around the arrow. This blood clot then outlined the formation of a soft callus made of cartilage. Over time, this cartilage was replaced by bone, creating a hard callus, and the arrow acted like a brace, strengthening the injured deer's body. It's hard to believe this without the photos. Interestingly, many articles about these animals mention the police searching for those who've been shooting. It's not because shooting deer in the head is against the law, there aren't any laws like that anywhere. The problem lies when the shot is taken. It's typically off-season, so this type of hunting is considered poaching. In reality, large mammals from blue whales to elephants, rhinos, and bulls have a good chance of surviving gunshot wounds. It all boils down to their body mass and their ability to withstand and disperse the impact of both blunt and penetrating trauma caused by the mass and velocity of a bullet. Where you shoot is far more important than the caliber you choose. Most animals can withstand a 50 caliber if the shot is not well placed. However, some animals are not worth the time, bullets, and risk to the hunter's life when aiming for the head. This is mostly about elephants. In Zimbabwe, some poachers shot a male elephant named Pretty Boy right in the head, and he managed to survive with that bullet for about three to six weeks. The vets from Aware Trust Zimbabwe found him when he wandered into the national park seeking shelter and help. The team gave Pretty Boy a sedative, took an x-ray, and cleaned the wound, but they thought it was safer to leave the bullet where it was. The shot turned out to be lucky for the elephant. If the poachers had aimed just a couple of inches lower, the bullet would have killed him. The bulletproof nature of large animals led to the development of the elephant gun in the late 1800s, a powerful weapon designed for hunting big game. However, with the advent of more modern firearms, poachers seemed to have enough firepower, yet firepower is not everything. The second animal on the list is the crocodile. Early settlers used to tell stories about how bullets would bounce off the hides of saltwater crocodiles without causing any harm to the predators. Remember the alligator that was swimming in a Texas lake with a knife stuck in its head like it didn't bother it at all? Many people talked about that animal back then. In fact, alligators are among the toughest creatures in the wild. An alligator's skin is covered with bony plates similar to a turtle shell, which act like armor. Alligator skulls are made up of heavy and thick bones, which means potential attackers have only a very small target to cause serious harm. Otherwise, objects would become lodged in the skull, and that would be the end of it. While a bullet isn't a knife, you need to be a very good and very lucky shooter to manage to kill an alligator. The same goes for other crocodiles. No other hunting animal on the planet demands such precise aim with the first shot. When you're out hunting crocodiles, you'll need a reliable rifle equipped with a scope, and nothing else will do. To take down a crocodile, you have to aim for either the spine just behind its head or the brain, which is about the size of a walnut and protected by an incredibly hard skull. Even experienced hunters when confronted with a crocodile describe this shot as the toughest they've ever taken. The Cape Buffalo is another animal that hunters might want to think twice about pursuing. Its horns are made of thick, hard bone merging at the center of the skull to form an incredibly sturdy shield. The shield is so tough that even bullets fired at close range can't penetrate to reach the brain. Approaching even within 330 feet is extremely dangerous because Cape Buffaloes have unpredictable temperaments. They can charge at you and seriously injure or even kill you despite any attempts to defend yourself. Buffalo's body is so thick that some hunters suspect these animals of being bulletproof. African buffaloes can endure numerous shots and still survive even if someone tries to aim for their heart.
Buffaloes have no weak spots in their natural defenses. With excellent vision, keen hearing, and a strong sense of smell, they pose a real challenge for hunters. These animals are highly sought after, requiring specialized gear and the right weaponry. And yes, you still have to aim for the heart. Targeting the head is pointless. Don't forget about polar bears. They're not heavily hunted, but some people live and work close to these predators. Polar bears can be very dangerous, and in certain situations, people have no choice but to shoot them. However, aiming for the head is pointless. The strength of the bear's skull isn't the main factor here, it's all about the brain. A large bear's brain volume is around 0.1 gallons, while the head volume is 2.5 gallons, sometimes more. So it's easy to shoot a bear in the head and miss the brain, which by the way is not just small, but also narrow. Shooting a bear in the eye and missing its brain is easier than you think. Even aiming between the eyes from close up can still result in a miss. Even if you know exactly where the brain is, a shot might not be enough. The skull, fur, and fat underneath the skin can stop the bullet. That's why it's recommended to aim for the bear's neck or spine instead of its head. Another option is to target the heart, but only from a close distance. This is always a reliable choice, particularly when you have no other options left. Meanwhile, in the depths of the world's oceans, there are also some incredibly tough creatures. The bulletproof whale shark, for instance, owes its resilience to a skin thickness exceeding six inches. It's not the thickest skin in the animal kingdom, as sperm whales boast skin thickness reaching up to 12 inches and more, but still, it's pretty impressive. Orcas are also tough. They can shrug off even a headshot. Case in point, an orca found in the Seine River, which, despite succumbing to other causes, had a bullet embedded in the base of its skull. Yet that bullet didn't stop the orca from being an orca, indestructible and fearsome predator. Here's what a whale skull looks like. Do you think a bullet could harm it in any way? Even when euthanizing beached whales for humane reasons, they don't shoot but use other methods. Shooting them's pointless, so their arteries are slit or a mixture of chemicals is injected into the heart to stop it. It might sound a bit gloomy, much like the idea of hunting animals, yet for many, it's a hobby that's limited to certain seasons because of hunting regulations. Going after animals outside those periods is breaking the law, so avid hunters often choose to target invasive species. There are no restrictions here, apart from the list of species itself. Pigeons, iguanas, and pythons, nutria, hogs, coyotes, some exotic animals? Depending on the region, you can hunt 24-7, 365 days a year. In some places, you don't even need a license to hunt iguanas and pythons. Perhaps this is why, over the past three years, around 4,000 pythons have been caught or killed in Florida. People were even paid based on the weight and length of the snakes, and the amounts were quite decent. The top prize winners, both professionals and newcomers, each received $2,000 for the heaviest snake. During the 2019-2020 season, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries increased the amount paid to hunters for each killed nutria from $5 to $6. While a $1 increase per animal might not seem significant, it could add up to hundreds or even thousands of dollars for some successful hunters in the state. In 2002, there was even a program to combat nutria in Louisiana. The goal was to remove up to 400,000 of these creatures each season along the coast to minimize damage. The goal was to remove up to 400,000 of these creatures each season along the coast to minimize damage. The same goes for invasive hogs. In Texas, where they're most abundant, you can shoot them with anything, anytime. No restrictions when it comes to dealing with these troublesome creatures. In the 2020-2021 season, 624,500 hogs were killed in Louisiana. But Texas is still way ahead. They hunt down about 750,000 hogs there. Naturally, they make a profit from this, roughly $5 per hog, plus money from selling the meat if they manage to sell it. What about other animals? In South Florida, you can get 50 bucks for catching a python. A coyote tail is worth $25 to $75, and the northern pike minnow goes for 5 to 8 bucks each, depending on the quantity. Skunk tails are valued between $10 and $150, while raccoons will bring you just 10 bucks. A badger's tail is valued at $10, but interestingly, you can get around $60 for one in the UK. Quite the price difference. Beavers can go for as much as $50, and that's not even the whole list. 
In addition to funding hunters to cull certain animals, the government also supports initiatives such as helicopter missions, for dealing with invasive species, of course. As per the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Texas saw 42,333 wild hogs culled in 2022, including 23,301 taken out from helicopters. Across the country, the Department of Agriculture has documented the elimination of 551,558 wild pigs between 2018 and 2022. Nevertheless, the department is looking to ramp up the use of helicopters, purchase more traps, and recruit additional manpower to address the wild hog issue. However, these measures come with a high price tag. Private companies also offer the opportunity for anyone interested to take a helicopter ride and shoot wild boars from above using anything from a machine gun. Of course, it comes with a hefty price tag, and the Department of Agriculture isn't thrilled about these private initiatives. Inexperienced hunters tend to hit their targets less often, and animals learn to fear helicopters. In addition to helicopters and firearms, they also use so-called M44 bombs to kill certain animals. These devices are essentially canisters placed in the landscape that release a cloud of sodium cyanide when pulled by animals. Typically, it kills foxes, coyotes, and other target species within five minutes. It's cost-effective, but poses a danger to non-target species and even humans. It's fair to say that this method is seriously outdated. The pursuit of invasive species is gradually turning into a thriving industry. It seems that fewer hunters are engaging in the old-fashioned hobby just for the sake of it. Nowadays, they use not just guns or bows, but cameras with thermal imaging, drones capable of releasing toxins, autonomous underwater vehicles guided by artificial intelligence, and much more. Eventually, when it comes to android robots hunting instead of humans, that's when we should start worrying. See you later.